there are several ways to combine functions like building blocks to put them together and make more complicated functions. Uh, for example, you could add two functions together or multiply two functions together or divide one function by another. And we've looked at methods of finding the derivatives of functions that are created this way from smaller building blocks. Well, there's another important way of combining functions that we're going to use a lot it's called composition of functions. Uh, the idea is to plug one function inside of another function. Uh, the notation for composition is this little circle here. So in, to distinguish it from something else like multiplication, maybe, uh, we use this open circle for composition. Although we're not really going to have to write it that often in this course. Uh, typically, we're just going to write it, like you see on the right side there, uh, with the g of x inside the function f of x. So we would usually read this out loud as f of g of x. Uh, and this operation of combining functions is called composition. Here's an example. Suppose that you have a function square root of x and another function x plus 3. Then you can make a composition of functions by plugging g into f. So notice what we're doing here. We've got f of g of x. I can rewrite f as the square root of whatever I'm plugging inside. That's this piece. And then I can replace the g of x that's inside the square root symbol with its value x plus 3. So when I make this composition f of g of x, I'm really ending up with the function square root of x plus 3. We could actually compose the functions in the other order, though. We could put f inside of g instead of putting g inside of f. If we did that, then we'd take the x in the definition of g and replace it with what we're plugging in. If we're plugging in f, then that's how x plus 3 becomes f of x plus 3. And then again, by rewriting f in terms of its definition, we see that g of f is really square root of x plus 3. Now, a lot of times in calculus, when we're trying to find the derivative of a function, what we actually want to do is figure out how we can think of that function as being made from smaller building blocks. And we've seen that with things like the product rule and the quotient rule. Now we're going to use it when we have a composition of functions, and that's going to give us a new rule. Um, but we'll get to that in the next video. Uh, first, it's important to figure out how we can identify the function as a composition of smaller, simpler building blocks. So the way you want to think of this most of the time is in terms of an inside function and an outside function. Here's an example. Imagine you start with the function square root of x squared plus 3x. You can think of this as an inside function. What's inside the square root there is x squared plus 3. You can think of that as one building block. And there's another building block, which we call the outside function. That's the function that just takes a square root of whatever you plug in. So if you take this thing we're calling the inside function, and you insert it into the outside function, then you're going to be able to write the function we started with as a composition. You take the inside function x squared plus 3x and plug it into the outside function square root of x. Doing that gives you the function we started with. Here's an example. Uh, suppose that you have the function h of t here, which is 1 over the quantity 2t plus 3 squared. And suppose you know that you want to think of the inside function as 2t plus 3. How could we find a function, an outside function, so that h is really f of g? So we know h, we know g. We want to figure out how to write h as a composition f of g. What should the f be? What should the outside function be? Well, let's use 1 over t squared. And hopefully this is going to make some sense here once we look at it. If I take this as my f and I plug in the function that was given for g, this is what we get, 1 over g of t quantity squared. Okay, that's just plugging g into f. Now let's write out what g is. g is 2t plus 3. So this expression, 1 over 
2t plus 3 quantity squared. That's what we wanted. That's h of t. So this is a skill that's going to be important to us when we cover the next rule of differentiation called the chain rule. Uh, now, there was another way to do this problem uh, if we wanted to think of it as a composition of functions, but we wanted to think of the inside function as something different. Instead of thinking of the inside function as just 2t plus 3, we could have considered the inside function to be the quantity 2t plus 3 squared. So this is a little bit different than we did in the last example, and you can back up the video if you want to look at that one again after you look at this one to compare them. But what I'm doing now, because I've chosen a different inside function, I'm going to have to use a different outside function in order for the composition to give me what I want. So what function should I use for an outside function to get this composition f of g to give me h? Well, let's just use 1 over t this time. If I just use 1 over t for my function f, then when I plug g into f, I get 1 over g. And since I know how to write out g as 2t plus 3 quantity squared, I can rewrite f of g this way, and notice that's exactly the same thing as we started with h of t. So this is a different way to break down h than we did in the last example. You might want to look at these two examples again to make sure you understand the difference. Um, most of the time, we would probably, when we're actually using this skill, have followed the pattern in the first example, because that's actually going to be a little bit simpler to use with the chain rule. But the point here is that a lot of times there's more than one way to think of the function you're looking at as a composition of the smaller building blocks. Let's look at one more. Here's a function v of w. Uh, part of the point of this example is to emphasize the fact that we don't have to be using f and g and x and h, but we're just going to switch two symbols now. So I'm going to use a v instead of an h, and a w instead of an x. So v of w is this function, 3 times the quantity w squared plus 4 squared. And this time I'm saying what I want the outside function to be. I want the outside function to be 3w squared. And what should my inside function be? So that I can write v as the composition f of g. What should the inside function be? Well, let's use what we see inside parentheses in the definition of v. Let's use w squared plus 4. That's our inside function. We were given the outside function 3w squared. If we plug g into that outside function to replace the variable, then f of g is 3g squared. We can write out g as w squared plus 4. And this expression is exactly what we started with for v of w. 